Part four, chapter ten of Short History of the Christian Church by John Fletcher Hurst. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter ten Mysticism in Germany. There had been indications, even during the Reformation, of the reappearance of the old mystical spirit which had been so beautifully illustrated at an earlier day in the career and spirit of John Towler and Heinrich Suso but the animation and excitement of such a period as witnessed the genesis of protestantism was not favourable to the calm and meditation of the typical mystic mysticism however much it may wander from safe paths when fully mature begins its career with the purest motives in its childhood it is always on the side of truth and wisdom one of the strongest protests during the controversial age was the rise of a new group of mystics they declared against the universal corruption and the eclipse of the spirit through the wild search for the letter they advocated the need of a new revival of faith in the invisible a firm reliance on spiritual guidance and a bringing back of the church to its purest conditions jacob bohem born fifteen seventy five and died sixteen twenty four was a plain saxon shoemaker he was not furnished with the culture of the universities and yet by his original thought pure life and remarkably clear perception of the useless character of the controversies of his times commanded the respect of learned and spiritual circles in his indignation at the theological rancor which he witnessed he came to regard the letter with too little favor he looked upon the inspiration of the bible as little different from that of the good man of all times to whom god makes also special revelations his aurora was his masterpiece he declared that god made revelations to him in such a way that his motive to write was irresistible he explains god's communications to him in these words i have never desired to know anything of divine mystery much less have I wished to seek or find it. I sought only the heart of Jesus Christ, that there I might hide myself from the anger of God and the grasp of the devil. Schlegel says that, compared with Klopstock, Milton, and even Dante, quote, Boheme almost surpasses them in fullness of emotion and depth of imagination, while in poetic expression and single beauties, he does not stand a whit behind them. End quote john arndt the author of true christianity was less mystical and more practical than bohem they were ranked together in general spiritual influence the classification was just in his true christianity he made a strong and bold attempt to divert the attention of the whole church of germany from the disputations and speculative theology of the times to sincere faith in christ and devotion to his cause this work produced a profound impression. It was entirely devoid of denominational coloring. Next to the Bible and Kempis's Imitation of Christ, it has had a wider circulation on the continent than any other work. It was early introduced into the United States and became a companion to the Bible among the Germans who followed Penn in planting and developing the colony of Pennsylvania gerhard was the spiritual son of arndt and did all in his power to perpetuate his work he attempted to define the questions at issue among theological disputants and to harmonize them his chief work was exegetical explication of particular passages he was revered by all classes for his profound learning and lofty type of piety john valentine andrea labored in the same department his keenest weapon was satire he aimed to bring the still lingering traces of alchemy into contempt but incidentally to show how ridiculous were the theological controversies which he witnessed there was no immediate promise of permanent results from this mystical movement but a spiritual phenomenon can never be judged without recognizing affinities and connections there cannot be a question that the remarkable school of mystics founded by bohem were the pioneers of the great pietistic reform 
if they attached too much importance to some obscure parts of christian doctrine or elevated beyond measure the inward spiritual vision or saw dimly some of the fundamental doctrines of revelation it must be admitted that from the sixteenth century to the eighteenth they were the real bearers of spiritual truth as luther and melanchthon had seen it and experienced its power the vessels may have been somewhat archaic and rude but the treasure which they contained was priceless End of chapter 10